Happy Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Mackenzie Lambert here, your host for Mac and the Movies. Before we begin, I wanted to give a special thanks to Todd for gifting me a replacement microphone holder. As you can hear, I am now back to the recording setup I had been using up until the previous week. I also wanted to give a special thanks to Elena. She inspired me to do the video series on Fritz Long. Without her, I would probably be doing a defense series on Uwe Boll or something much less interesting. We have reached film number four in our Fritz Lang series. We began with Dr. Mabusa, Der Spieler, followed by Metropolis and M. This installment, we are graced by the return of two of Lang's finest characters, Dr. Mabusa and Inspector Lohman. Let's take a look at the testament of Dr. Mabusa. The disgraced police detective, Hoffmeister, discovers a criminal conspiracy and tries to report his findings to his former partner, Inspector Lohman. Before Hoffmeister can share any details, he is attacked and found in a state of insanity. Hoffmeister is institutionalized under the supervision of Professor Dr. Baum. During a lecture, Baum introduces the case of Dr. Mabusa, a criminal mastermind who went insane ten years ago. While in his cell, he is writing plans and strategy on how to commit crimes to effectively create chaos on society. Somehow, these orders are being carried out despite Mabusa being in custody of Bomb. How are these criminals getting these orders from Mabusa? We are also introduced to a subplot for Thomas Kent, a henchman who is under orders of Dr. Mabusa. Kent is having a moral crisis. He loves his girlfriend Lily, but he is under severe obligation to carry out the orders of Dr. Mabusa. Will he choose a life of crime, or will he find redemption in love? The takeaway for me from Testament of Dr. Mabusa was the inevitable nature of crime. No matter how much is done to stop it or attempts to curb it, there will always be crime. There will always be those who plan the crimes and those who carry them out. When one like Dr. Mabusa is incapacitated, there will be another to take over their mantle. And the scale of the crimes increase or become more severe. One plot involves starting a fire that leads to poisonous gas being spread throughout the neighboring areas. That is terrorism in a true sense of the word. But unnerving as this act of crime is, it's done for the sake of doing it with no endgame intended. How far will one go in exercising evil? Given what would be discovered in the years after this film's production, it's a scary thought to behold. Mabusa makes references to the empire of crime, seeing himself as an emperor. One can't help but draw comparisons to the literary Napoleon of crime, Professor James Moriarty. Yet Mabusa is a Moriarty figure without a Holmes, and I wouldn't go so far as to have Loman be viewed as such a figure. The Testament of Dr. Mabusa was released in Budapest in 1933, but was banned in Germany. Head of the Ministry of Public Education and Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, was impressed with the film, but feared it would incite acts of violence by the citizenry against the state. This would be the last film Long would make with his wife, Thea von Harbo. Von Harbo was sympathetic to the Nazi cause. Despite being raised Roman Catholic, Long was born of Jewish heritage and left Germany for fear of public prosecution. During production, Long also filmed a version of Testament of Dr. Mabusa in French. This version would be filmed on an alternate production schedule to the German version, much like the Spanish production of Dracula for Universal Films. To Long's credit, Testament of Dr. Mabusa might be one of the earliest instances of a shared universe in cinema. We were first introduced to Dr. Mabusa in Dr. Mabusa Der Spieler in 1921. Inspector Lohman was introduced in M in 1931. Both characters appear in the same film, Testament of Dr. Mabusa, in 1933. The influence of the film can be felt in a few international classics. The scene of Kent and Lily using water as a means to escape a situation of certain death would be echoed in the Jean-Pierre Jeunet classic, Delicatessen. The ramblings of Dr. Mabusa regarding chaos as a social mechanism draws comparisons to Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight. 
In an interview, Christopher Nolan stated, I think I made Jonah, my brother, watch Fritz Lang's Dr. Mabusa prior to writing The Joker. Rudolf klein Roja returns as Dr. Mabusa, but in a limited capacity. He lacks the energy of his previous performance. Whether it's age or he wasn't given much by Lang, it's unknown for this sedated turn. Otto Wernick reprises the role of Inspector Lohmann and is still very much charismatic. He makes a strong contrast to Dr. Mabusa. He is not afraid to be comedic if to provide much needed levity for the audience. The supporting roles are sufficiently handled by game actors. Long regular George John plays the assistant to Baum. Carl Meixner seems to be channeling Peter Lorre as Hoffmeister. Oscar Beregi manages to play the dual identity of Bomb and... Oh hell, this film is 85 years old. It's your problem if you're angry over spoilers. Bomb is overseeing the asylum as well as carrying out the orders of Dr. Mabusa under the guise of Mabusa. Gustav de Sel as Trent and Werner Lissam as Lily offer a sentimental romance to counterbalance the crime plot. We actually want to see them succeed and for their love to prevail. It's an element that was lacking in the previous films I reviewed, save for Metropolis. Dissell has the Hollywood square jaw, while Lissom has an innocence to her beauty. Testament of Dr. Mabusa is a frightening film about crime and those who commit them. It has great characters, strong performances, and some heart to go with the cold procedural elements. And that wraps up this review of The Testament of Dr. Mabusa. Thanks for watching. As a heads up, there will be no review next week. I will be in the process of moving to my new apartment, so I won't have time. As a consolation, I have found additional films from Fritz Lang that I will add to the review schedule. Uh, this will carry us all the way to the middle of April. Our next review for March 12th will be the 1941 thriller, Manhunt. Until then, this is Mackenzie Lambert for Mac and the Movies. Take care, and have a good week.